being a, a, a black kid in the 80s and uh, picking surfing, I had no idea that it was going to come with this whole stigma, you know, of what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do as a, as a young black male in America. I remember the first time I saw surfing is I just felt it. I, I wanted to move like that. I wanted to, to experience what it meant to, to, to move and harness that power on the ocean and be able to move at will, express yourself on this thing. I wanted to know what that felt like. And the first time that I stood up in the whitewash at uh, Tamarack State Beach, it was like the heavens opened, time stopped, and it was like whatever it was filled me, and that was it. My choice and like, my whole direction in life just went like this. This is you now. I remember in high school, you know, at Carlsbad when I was like, yeah, I'm into surfing, and kids were like, you, don't, you guys don't even swim. What do you mean you're going to learn how to surf? And they, they, they never said it from a place of racism. They just, that's just what they thought. There weren't, you know, Carlsbad, my high school had like, you know, 2,800 kids. Three of them were black. Myself and the one track star and the running back. You know, and that's what people thought. You're supposed to play football. You're supposed to play ba basketball. You guys don't swim. Um, yeah, it was weird. And then I dealt with a lot of race shit for a while, you know? It took a long time before people just let me be. And um, to a degree, I've always sort of had to deal with it. I, I long for a time when I don't have to be asked the question, you know, what's it like to be a, a, a black surfer? Because I, I never thought of myself as a black surfer. I just thought of myself as a very average surfer who su suffers from, you know, a lack of ability to get barreled the way he would like to on his backhand and, you know, the constant humbling defeat of head dips and bad timing on turns and getting out there and doing it again. It was weird because I took it from, from both ends. I had, you know, white kids who, most of them were just curious. And some of them were racist. You know, you can only be naive to a certain bit, and then it's like, actually, you're kind of racist, you know? And so those people I would just put in their place. But I, I reached a certain point where I was like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, your jokes are not funny. They, they're not jokes anymore. And you say this shit all the time, so obviously you think it's a little weird that this is what I do. So let's talk about it. What's, what is this? What place does this come from? And most of the time, it just comes from, you know, parents and, and people not being exposed so much. And people would say, you're, hey, you know, it's cool. Like, you're not like a, you're kind of like, you're like a white black guy. You know, you're not like a regular black guy. That's cool. And as, especially during, during the 80s when, you know, Southern, Southern California was just rife with gang violence. And every time you turn on the news, it was about some drive-by shooting. And, you know, Oceanside next door to Carlsbad had a lot of, had a lot of gang violence and you know people would literally like pat me on the back like hey man it's cool that you're like you know you're not a regular black guy but you're like you know you're like us how do you how do you how do you take that and when I was young it, it, I, I sort of at first you you want acceptance so you sort of take it and you laugh along with it, ha ha ha. And then you sort of reach a certain point where you're like, this doesn't feel good. This is weird. Oh, that's because this isn't right. And by the way, look at what you come from. How would your father feel right now? What did your father fight for? Are you just gonna like dance? Like you're just gonna, because they've accepted you into, into their tribe with these you know, stipulations that it's because you're sort of a white black guy that, you know, you're going to take this? And um, once I stopped and I looked at that and I remembered that, where I came from, uh, from my father, and I just stopped taking it, you know, and it, 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 got, it got better. But it, it took vigilance for sure. And um, it also just came from, this is my love. 
you know, and I wasn't going to have it shaped by, you know, these parameters that people wanted to make it. And, and one of the main questions I always get asked is, you know, why aren't there more people of color, you know, in, on the mountains, in the water? And my answer was always exposure, opportunity, you know? How about we become a part of not just exposing kids to these sports so that they can do them, but exposing kids to the principles of these sports so that they can become better people. Putting kids in a position to, to harness the principles of the, of the lifestyle so that they can make life choices for who they're going to be. You know, we started talking about, you know, falling down and getting back up. You know, having to negotiate a new environment that's intimidating, like the ocean. You know, wave selection, choice, and putting yourself in the position to succeed. Putting yourself in an uncomfortable position so that you can succeed. You know, socialization, communicating, you know, being a, a part of a tribe. All these things that when you stop and look at what our, our sports are, they have all, all the framework of it are all these amazing building blocks for life. You know, I'd love to be an old dude, you know, at 80 or something and have seen a young person of color, especially like, yeah, I'd like to see a, a young black kid like make the tour in my lifetime. I will cry that day because I don't think people understand what it's like to not see people like you that, that look like you doing what you love. You know, sometimes I look around and I'm like, man, it'd be cool to see some other people that look like me. I want them to feel what this is like too. And uh, yeah, I, I would be lying. And that's not racial, it's not racial. It's just life, man. You know, I'd like to see everyone get to, to benefit from what this is like. I, I think what I would like my legacy to, to be in the end was that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you look like, that there truly is no box. Every day when you turn on the television or turn on your phone, people are trying to to huddle you and gather you into these places that they say, this is, your, this, is, this is who you are. And I would just like to, to be part of making that a myth, you know, that you are who you want to be. And should you take the opportunity and hard work that you truly it's not, you know, a, a Pixar tale that you truly can do whatever it is that you want to do. Just do it, like, with everything you have. Just do it with, ev with, with everything you have. Just throw yourself into whatever it is you want to do.